Stand with to go, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, eight rounds. This in the welterweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks, trimmed in white. He weighed in officially 141 and one quarter pounds. In nine professional bouts, his record stands at eight victories, just one defeat, five wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Santiago Domingo, la República Dominicana. Here is Jonathan Fortuna. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing silver trunks, he weighed in 141 and one half pounds. As a professional, he is perfect in the ring. Seven victories, no defeats, four wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the Boricua out of Utuado, Puerto Rico, the undefeated, Luis Feliciano. And your referee in charge of the action is Jerry Cantu. La boca. La boca. Tu padre no es poco alto. Aquí está. Es legal. You received your instructions in the dressing room. I want a good, clean, hard fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Jerry Cantu, the third man in the ring. Let's look at the tail of the tape for this welterweight clash between Feliciano and Fortuna. See the difference in age, coach? Aliso. Feliciano's the young Are you ready? Youngster. No, difference in age and experience. Fortuna's been around for a while. Fortuna turned pro back in 2013. This is the first time he's fighting off of the island. First time fighting in the United States. All nine of his fights have been in the Dominican Republic. Luis Feliciano, 7-0, four KOs from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, now living in Southern California. Ben Lira is his trainer. Goes up to Big Bear and gets quality sparring. And Abel Sanchez is Summit Gym. Feliciano has beautiful reach, man. He has, he's tall, you know, he has great style. He's very patient. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a good up and coming fighter. You know, you're gonna see a lot of Feliciano, good Puerto Rican fighter. Big amateur background for Feliciano. He was, he went to the Olympic trials for the 2016 games while he was a student at Marquette University. He got his degree with the Golden Knights. He was on a scholarship thanks to USA Boxing. Got his degree in criminal justice. So while he was attending school, he was also training for boxing. But his classmates would see him when he walked in with a little shiner for sparring and some cousin. What are you doing? Like, we're in here studying. What are you, what's going on here? He had dreams going to the Olympics, did not qualify after that. Wanted to finish up his degree because he was so close. And then he turned pro. Here he is uh, break, as a break professional at the age of 25. Started boxing as a kid. Family loved the sport of boxing. Or for him as a Puerto Rican. Tito Trinidad is his favorite. He's like Oscar too, because, you know, that's the promoter. You got to make sure of it. You know, what well, Puerto Rican's not going to say Tito, right? It's like a Mexican saying Chavez. Exactly. Yeah. Tito Trinidad, one of the best fighters in Puerto Rico. Stop, stop, stop. Break on your own. Break. Cleanly, cleanly. Leave you. Fortuna started off pretty fast. Started off uh, unloading some heavy punches on Feliciano, looking to, to hurt him and maybe looking for a knockout. But Feliciano, you know, kept keeps his composure. He's uh, really patient and just letting him wear down a little bit. He's going to smother him slowly. We'll see what happens in the next couple rounds. Good right hand from Fortuna. I don't know much about him. Record of 8-1, and one, but the opponents, not exactly the best records you've got up against. I was trying to find some video footage of him on YouTube. Not much out there. Maybe a couple on video on their phones, but maybe they sent it up to WhatsApp, but that was it. No. Yeah, these, put, uh, these Dominican right. fighters, they're, they're crafty, you know, they're, they got skill, you know, they're not easy. They have to go I've seen a lot of um, Dominican fighters that come and they really come to fight. Feeling out round between Feliciano and Fortuna, scheduled for eight. Con Golden Boy, es una familia de peleadores. Cuando nosotros tenemos una meta... Para 
para ser campeón se necesita disciplina, fuerza de voluntad, sacrificios y talento. Los límites no existen en el boxeo. You got to be bold, coach. And Luis Feliciano, John of Fortuna, Fortuna in his red. Beto Duran and Coach Joel Diaz, the Joel Diaz training camp. And Malita Pobreza jumping in. You were talking about the Dominicans. You have one in your own camp right now, don't you? Yeah, um, Carlos Adames. And uh, I had uh, Felix Diaz, uh, gold medalist as well, you know, Dominicans. And I've worked before a little bit with uh, Joan Guzman. Um, these Dominican fighters, they're very, very crafty, you know, they're smart on their feet. No, 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 no. Uh, they're not easy fighters, they love the sport, and when they get in the ring, they can give somebody trouble. Well, you think Dominican Republic and we're thinking baseball players. Right. And so when you meet a Dominican boxer, I've talked to a couple of them, I said, look, no, 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 in Dominican, no, no. we love our boxing. No, not down. As Luisi Feliciano slips, Jerry Cantu had told them to stop, watch out the elbow. Elbow, box. As a uh, coach, but the Dominican fighters, they come in with a different attitude. It's almost like a chip because they think nobody pays it, gives them any kind of stop, credit, stop, stop, right? No, no punch, no punch. Yeah, well, um, you know, they have a little reputation of um, disciplined fighters, you know. If you if you know a Dominican fighter, you know that these Dominican fighters, they're great fighters, they're great boxers. But, you know, they have some sort of uh, undiscipline as far stop, as, stop, stop, you know, stop, stop, there you uh, go. eating there habits, you, go, you know, okay. nutrition, you know. They, they always have trouble making weight. You know, they're great fighters, but they always have that that bad reputation of not making weight, not not learning how to control, you know, their uh, their nutrition and have a proper proper nutrition. Fortuna came in at 141.2, Luciano 41.4, and you see Luciano has more of a chiseled frame compared to Fortuna. See, Feliciano's, you know, he's a taller taller fighter. You know, he's a uh, he got the longer reach. And you can see the difference. Uh, maybe Fortuna can, I mean, to me, he looks like he, he could fight at a, at a lightweight or junior lightweight. But, you know, sometimes he has to take the chance step, 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 and fight at 140 two pounds. Back, two steps back, two steps back. Box. There we see Feliciano landing that overhand right. He's landed it a couple times. Fortuna in the first round, I think he's, he, uh, he unloaded so many punches that he, uh, he got tired. Now he's he's uh he's gassed out break. a little bit. He's, his punches are not as effective as they were early in the first stop. round. Yeah, you're back to your point about the weight. Feliciano is fought at 39 and 40. This is the first time he's fighting at 41 because it was a different weight. So it's technically a welterweight, not because of Feliciano's side. Oh, Feliciano was a 140 pounder. Solid. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He's 140, a solid 140 pounder. Yeah. And, stop, stop, and he stop, never stop. has trouble making weight. He's, yeah, like, he's always on. The different stop. double two in India. Yeah, slipped earlier in the round. Well, here we see, I think something happened. He hit him with the elbow, and then he just went through with that, over, with that left hook and went straight through and missed it. He was just off balance. Luis Feliciano in the white. Jonathan Fortuna in the red. Eight round schedule for Feliciano. Mentioned that extensive amateur background so they can move him up faster because of that background. 
okay? Yeah, when they have all that experience, amateur experience, you gotta move them fast. Uh, I mean, through experience, through my experience, all these fighters that have a lot of amateurs, amateur fights, you know, they they come into the professional business. Uh, you cannot wait long. I mean, if you wait five, six years, then they'll be tired. They'll wear out. Yeah. You need to move them uh, fast. Get them the proper fights. They have experience. You know, all these fights. These fighters have 200 fights, 300 amateur fights. Uh, they can step up with somebody up there already. Stop, 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 stop. Body no, shot no, no, from no, no, Luciano. No. Fortuna holding stop. on. Can't two. Tell them to get out of there. Stop. Fortuna's gas now. Yeah, that mouth, mouth is wide open. And now his punches, stop. you know, he's stop. just throwing, stop. throwing punches with no effect. He's just trying to keep Feliciano off. He's moving back now. Earlier he started, he was going forward. Now he's, he's moving back. Once in a while, throws a punch and he misses. Luciano turned pro in 2013. His only loss came in his second fight when he was stopped in the second round. After that, won. His last fight was in May, a first round KO. Between all the fights of the Dominican Republic. So you don't know exactly the quality of opposition that he's been up against. No, 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 no. At this point, Feliciano, Feliciano should just start attacking the body. Forget about the head right now. Um, you know, Fortuna is tired already. He's, he's not really doing anything. He will not hurt him. He should just start attacking the body, start attacking the body, put him in one spot, and then switch it up. Weird style, too, for Fortuna, right? Break. Yeah, he's just, that is a break. He's, just, he's just being defensive. Break, he's just trying to break. keep Feliciano away. Stop, stop, stop. He's not using and any jabs. Frustration for Feliciano yeah. as he picks up Fortuna. Especially the, the sparring you get where you're so used to just going in there and scrapping and going at it, then you get this awkward style. That's why that's why you have to, you know, not get frustrated. You have to relax a little bit and think, what am I doing wrong? What is he doing wrong? Like, for example, right here, this is what he needs to do. Feliciano needs to attack the body. Nothing but the body right now. When your opponent is feeling fatigued, kill the body. Keep keep attacking to the body until you know you have him where you want him. He's not, he's not gonna be uh, moving anymore, and then you can go to the head. Lunging as Fortuna. Nothing behind those attempted shots. Ten seconds to go in the third round. It's scheduled for eight. Luis Feliciano, Jonathan Fortuna on the night of Cancio Zenunai in India. Golden Boy es una familia de peleadores. Cuando nosotros tenemos una meta, la cumplimos. Para ser campeón se necesita disciplina, fuerza de voluntad, sacrificios y talento. Los límites no existen en el boxeo. el plan que teníamos, pelear en medio del ring, en ocasiones me dio la pauta para poder estar en las cuerdas también, y pues hicimos lo que teníamos que hacer, lo que teníamos planeado hacer para la pelea. It's impossible to knock somebody out when he fights the fight not to be knocked out, but everybody here knows who won the first fight. Let me tell you one thing, I believe Canelo will knock him out. Here before the end of the round, we see um, Feliciano landed an overhand right that really, really put uh, uh, Fortuna in his, his place for a second. Beth Durant, Joel Diaz, and you all over the world watching, including the crime fighting cut man, Mike Rodriguez, tuning in. If you're watching Luis Feliciano in white, down with the Fortuna, the Dominican Republic, eight and one. Feliciano, right about Ben Lira in Southern California. Right. You were saying before break. with the break, you got to go break. after the body, right? Once you sense that he's just fatigued. When Feliciano feels that, you know, Fortuna can hurt him anymore, I mean, you cannot be you cannot be too cautious. But at the same time, you got to always establish the counters. Like before the end of the round, he landed a great right hand. You got to follow it up. There we go. It's just a matter of countering, uh, waiting the right time for Fortuna to step in and, and catch him on the way in. And Fortuna is just going to hold and make it ugly. That's his style. Sometimes he feels uh, he feels a little bit in danger, and what he's going to do is going to go on a clinch, 
and he's gonna try to survive because he don't he don't want to get caught with a good punch that he will hurt him. He won't get knocked out. Luis Feliciano upstairs, solid right. You can see that the experience on the side of Feliciano. He's got tools there. Oh, he has great tools. He got great tools. He just needs to put them on the right spot. That's why it's, it's called timing. Uh, Fortuna steps in with a jab. Uh, Feliciano needs to counter, execute his jab. You know, like for example, there, you see, you see him coming to the body, connect with something on top. Have always have a counter punch. That was a great counter right there. He made a miss and came back. But at the same time, he pulls back. No, 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 he gets no, caught with the no, right no, hand no, no. because he's at, he's at his range. He needs to step back a little bit. With that distance that Feliciano has, he needs to not stay in one spot. Step in, step out, make him miss, make him fall short in counter. No, Clinton, in that know. position there, when you got an, when you got your opponent against the ropes, attack the body, attack the body, and make sure he's where you want him. And then you can make the, the, the change. Luciano comes in right. and right with that, that hole. That's also a learning experience for these young fighters of dealing with somebody who's trying to clinch, where you gotta learn how to get off of them, right? You need them because in the future, uh, you know, you're gonna run into more of those. Yes, you never know yes, what segundo. you're gonna see in a fight. That's why you gotta be ready for everything and anything. You only spar so much. It doesn't matter until you get activated in the ring. Number four. Okay, put the hook in, back him up. That's, the only, that's when you want to get him. The other time, you have to research him, you're losing energy doing that, okay? Okay, right away, two hands, touch him, he's not gonna do anything, he can't. He, once you start letting him step back, step back, he's dead, okay? He's dead, because obviously he can't shoot from here we got an exchange from both fighters. You know, they get a, they get a little reckless at times because they're already getting a little, uh, some desperation among each other. They exchange, they they land one or two punches, but they miss most of them. Here we have Feliciano trying to set up for the right hand. Luis Feliciano in the white. The roots, his family, Utuado, Puerto Rico. He grew up in Milwaukee, but he's very proud to be from Puerto Rico went back there as a kid every summer. The Boricua. Feliciano was on Golden Boy Live radio show for an hour. He was a co-host with Jesse Rosales and myself, coach, and he was telling us about how his family from Utuado, which is in the countryside of Puerto Rico, so after the hurricane, they didn't have any kind of communication with the family at all. And then three months later, his uncle posted on Facebook, hey guys, we're okay. Like that's the kind of struggle as like he said he's in camp and he's in the United States and he's doing everything he's preparing for a fight but at the same time worried about his immediate family is how they're doing and they just got back electricity in Utuado but imagine that though where you don't know anything about your family for months hoping that one of the uncles went to a top side one of the hills and was finally able to get signal on his phone so he can post hey we're alive we're okay that is amazing because, I mean, you know, family. Family is very, very important. And if the family is okay, you know, it, it, it motivates you to train. Yeah. I mean, if you're in training camp and you don't know nothing about your family, you don't know if they're okay, I mean, it's, uh, it's a big distraction because you're not 100% focused. Um, you know, hey, I mean, I'm surprised that he kept that, that his mentality. He was focused and went to his camp. No, no, no. Good thing that you know his uncle got that, you know, his phone to work and you know sent a message that everybody was okay. El, El Wifi was working finally. He landed a beautiful yeah. overhand right. right. Yeah, that hurt. That stung a little bit. As Fortuna just trying to hold on and grab and do anything to keep Feliciano away. Breathing heavy, attacking the body, coach, just like you said. That might be done. Siete, ocho, venga. 
Mírame. América. Está bien. ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Quién más? ¿Quién más? Va. The way he rolled down, coach. It didn't look like he was going to get up. A attack the body is what Feliciano is doing. And all survival is Jonathan Fortuna. Body shot drops him again. Three, four, five. Get him off. That's all over. And that's it. It's done. Jerry Cantu said, Do you want more? Feliciano's answer in the corner was like, No, we don't. So, Luis Feliciano, you were saying to Coach Joe Diaz, Get the body. The mouth is wide open. Attack, attack, attack that body. And when he was finally able to get space, Two times he sass. See, these fighters, sometimes they, they want to go for the beautiful knockout. They go for the head. They want to go finish a great knockout. But you know what? This right here finishes the fights. If Feliciano would have attacked to the body earlier, he would have stopped. He would have made this easier. And let's look at how it ended. The second body shot immediately after you dropped him for the first time, coach. See, there he goes. There's a right, a right to the solo flex caught him perfectly and put him on his knees and he wasn't okay because he had gotten a body shot previously so he was still fully he was not fully recovered from the first one he popped up right away he just knew he knew he hadn't been hit like that a long time if ever plus he was tired you know he yep. was gassing and then two body shots back to back and you knew that feliciano was going to come and keep attacking right at the same spot our ring announcer, Joe Martinez, who's looking very smooth tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 38 seconds. Round number five, referee Jerry Cantu stops this bout. Your winner by KO. He is still undefeated. El Borriqua, Luis Feliciano. Wepa, Luis Feliciano, the Puerto Rican from Utuado, Puerto Rico, Milwaukee, Wisconsin roots. Go back home for a week, he said, and then he's going to come right back. 8-0, his fifth stoppage. You see a long time in the business, Ben Lira taking his gloves off. Let's take another look at the way that this fight ended. As he was finally able to get to that body. He was putting him against the ropes, but he's, he's hitting him to the body right there with the right hand. Once you start touching that body, your opponent's gonna feel it. That was a great left hook right there, right to the liver. Yeah, the way he rolled around, they're like, uh oh. And this and is then, what did it. That's what did it. That straight right to the solo.